the hotel where he is Balaji Sarovar and again we have a coincidence that she is coming to the place of Venkatramana Balaji and we are hosting the conference in the same venue. Now I invite Dr. Jaiswal ma'am, Dr. Savaskar ma'am to welcome Dr. V. Shanta ma'am on stage the awardee of three Padmas with a floral bouquet. Get to get to get the goal. 
you have a long way to go. You have to decide as to what you want to do, what you aspire to do. I think there are, when we were medical students, our avenues were very, very few. Today, the avenues are very, very large. You can be a good clinician. Can you next one? You can be a good clinician practitioner, a specialist, super specialist, teacher, research scientist. Widening avenues are available. You can reach the sky, you can reach the moon. The widening avenues involve biomedical technology, biomedical engineers. They, they are all multidisciplinary efforts, including medicine, biophysics, physics, electronics, computer science, biology, chemistry, etc. The basic objective of all this will be to improve the quality of medical care, improve the diagnosis, methods in diagnosis and diagnostics, the therapeutic, improve therapeutic equipments and more and more and more. Over the last 60 years, I have had the unique opportunity to see the changing horizon, changing horizon in the medical field as also in cancer. I have primarily been involved only in cancer right from the time I did my post-graduation. I have done nothing but cancer. So I may be biased in certain areas to cancer only. The next one. The practice of medicine. I basically want to talk to the young people because the more I see of the younger generation, I find that there is a lot of lacking in certain areas of medical education. And what is practice of medicine? It is, medicine is not just a profession. It is an art and a science. This is something that we must know that medicine is not just for diagnosing a patient with a fever or a cholera or a cancer. It is an art and you will have to be part of the art. Now, the both of Hippocrates says concept of service to humanity and respect for human life and to do no harm or manage. I think this is very vital understanding of this oath that we take as medical professionals before we are permitted to practice. We must know that it is a concept of service that is the prime thing in medicine. That is, next is respect, respect to one and all, irrespective of who they are. The most important I would like to uh, impress mm -hmm. is respect your patient. The patient gives you an opportunity to do something for them. They have come to you with great expectation and you, you have to ensure that you give the best, most importantly, respect to the patients and their family. Now, the practice of medicine has existed from the time of Hippocrates. It is a medicine, is an art, and needs the finest of skills, activity of intellect, patience, and absolute devotion. It is again, I am repeating it, a concept of service to humanity, to cure where possible, to bring a smile on the face of suffering, but relief always. Never say nothing can be done. Something can be done at any point of time to keep the, the, the patient or the individual as happy as possible till their life goes on. It is a, medicine is an art of healing. That is what the Hippocrates said. That it, it was an art of art and science. Physicians at that time, they had no microscope. They did not know anything about the biology of disease. And they listened to the patient. Today, listening has become very, very little. So I think listening is very important. Listening to the patient, the complaint that the patient has to say. And 
the communication, communication skill becomes extremely important. The next one. Now, in spite of the fact that the property time did not have most anything of what we have today. You will see when you go through the lines of the property road and the entire the, there is a justification for medical action. They have said you have when you can do medical action and when you should not do. This is something that we need to know much more than what they did at the time because today everything is available but we must know when to use it and when not to use it. And there is a very code, very here they have Hippocrates has left a code of doctor-patient relationship, the teacher-student relationship and the influence of the physician on healing. This is very important as a medical professional. The first meeting with the patient is going to be vital. The, the impact that you create on the patient, I think, the confidence that you give them, I think, that is going to make the whole thing, the relationship between the doctor and the patient, and even in the healing, as it is said. The doctor-patient relationship is one of care with human approach, concern, compassion and empathy. It is one of trust and hope. And you must ensure that you give them the necessary trust in which they have given you the confidence. You must be worthy of the trust that the patient makes on you. There should be always a critical self-appraisal at any point of time, whether you are doing the right thing or wrong, whether you can improve, you always have to pause and ponder on the action taken by you. I mean, you don't have to go back when you see a patient and then take a decision and what is the result. And the result is not that you expected. You have to pause and ponder and say, have we done the right thing? Should we have done something better? So these are vitally important for the the medical graduate, the, the new medical graduate because many of these, I believe, are not being, I mean, emphasized. Many of them may be taught, but then they are not emphasized enough to say that they are as vital as a diagnosis and treatment. The practice of medicine in the Hippocratic era was caregiving and the crucial component was caregiving and that today the modern era is receding and is paled into insignificance. This is happening essentially because of proliferation in understanding, proliferation of scientific knowledge, proliferation of technology, and uh, all this has ended, resulted in a change in the medical practice, medical scenario. So everything has changed. But the other way, that medicine is an art and it has to be art and science should not be forgotten because technology has come. The, everybody knows the name of Osler. Osler, a great physician, said medicine started as an art and science. Art was the primary one. Science has come later. Today, modern science, modern practice has become science and art. Science is predominant. Art is going back. And unfortunately, what we see is gradually going and disappearing. The balance between the art and science is lost. Today, I'm sorry to say, I'm not sure many of the senior people here will agree with me that art has completely disappeared and the patient becomes a bundle of technologies. I mean, I do, I'm not sure about the general medicine and other areas of practice. As far as cancer is concerned, no patient comes to us without a bundle of scans. The first thing that one does, the minute they say they have some problem, they want to do a scan. And they don't even, many of the general public, they so much of, uh, sort of unethical marketing has been done that every, every public person 
they go. I want to scan. They go home or it's whether it is out of sound or anything. So they will come with the wonder of even if we don't do it out of sound or a scan, they say scan by the heart, something like that, they will ask. So I think it is what to be remembered very, very carefully. Now, what is the change in the medical scenario that we have seen over the last 15 years? I came into the Cancer Institute in 1954. I have just taken my post-graduation. So I have no information whatever about cancer. I know what I am today. Whatever the introduction has been given about me, it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the Cancer Institute which has mentored me and what I am today is the Cancer Institute. So I owe a great deal to them and I thank you for giving me the opportunity. Now the change in medical scenario, the proliferation in technology, what has it done? It has increased life expectancy, no doubt at all. From a year of incurability, we are going on to curability. Many of the communicable diseases have been conquered. I mean, in our days, in, when we were in medical college, with house surgeons, the typhoid was a terrible thing. We lost people in typhoid. Today, no, everybody will laugh if they say anybody died of typhoid. So, how many diseases are conquered, including audio? But unfortunately, in India, they are not being 100% conquered. We still have problem, but we are also faced with the problem of non-communicable diseases, which is increasing. The non-communicable diseases has given rise to more problems also. What is happening is we have specialists, super specialists, other super specialists, and more and more and more. Now, there is no doubt that we have improved in our all areas of life, but it has also resulted in a spiraling cost of Medicare. Today's problem is cost of Medicare. And this is so, especially in an area like India, area like the developing countries. Uh, I do not like to call ourselves developing. I hate calling it so. But unfortunately, we need to do it because we have problem everywhere. Now, the India because money. Money is the problem, hindrance. Now, so much of uh, medicine doesn't reach the really poor. So, I think the spiraling cost of Medicare becomes a ethical issue. This is something that we as professionals have to see what we can contribute. This is what I have already said. The non-communicable diseases are major, are cancer, cardiovascular diseases, cerebrovascular diseases, diabetes, and many more. The others are come lower down, but they are also there. But the major problems are cancer, diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases. Now, today, therefore, the non-communicable diseases Fortunately for us, have are preventable. Preventable can basically happen because of personal habits. So the trust today is going to be more on prevention. Of course, we have to continue our researching on other areas, but prevention is going to be most important, and that again needs to be. Uh, uh, impressed upon the undergraduate and uh, not only community medicine is going to be important. The change in medical uh, technology and medical education, how they compare and the training I believe should improve because of this change in Medicare and technology. Training should improve humanity, communication skill and behavioral sciences. What I mean by behavioral sciences, the way you approach the patient, the patient, as, which I have already mentioned in the doctor-patient relationship. Now, 
we come out here very important area, very, uh, I don't know, sure how I should mention it, but uh, the ethics, values, and principles. I think today it is not just medical profession, but generally, general values in all areas is going down, and we have to, the medical profession is a noble profession. And we have to ensure that we maintain the values and principles. And we have to see what I have already said, whatever, whatever we are doing, what is right or what is wrong, what can be done and what cannot be done. I think this I come to a little later about time for me. In many areas, when nothing much can be done, we will still continue the treatment for various other reasons. I will come to that. Yes, I, I have a lot of experience and unfortunate and unhappy incidents in cases of cancer. We will come to that. Ethics in medicine, lacking in medical education and training. I think this I think has to be very, very important area to be and see that our boys and girls get this. Now, what is ethics in medical profession? That is important. Honesty, integrity, transparency, accountability, confidentiality, and respect. I said always respect. Respect your teachers, not just teachers. Respect your colleagues. I think that is important. The respect your other classmates. I think everybody needs respect. That's your patient. I think I mean, already I have mentioned in the area of sophisticated technology, how does it benefit the patient? How does it benefit the patient? And cost benefit is a vital area in which the profession, medical profession, has to take responsibility. In one of the areas where we can reduce cost will be by ethical practice. Ethical practice, which is going to be patient centric and not physician centric. They come here. You come here. We can hear. We can hear. We can hear, madam. In ethical practice, one of the things that I need to say is availability of high technology should not be the sole reason for its use. Just because you have a CT scanner, just because you have a robotic, not necessarily that you should use it. This is what is happening. And you must consider when and where to use, which is better, under what condition, and cost benefit. Every one of them. These have got to be taught to the student at the graduate and postgraduate level. And the, the profession ethics, you should act in the best interest of the patient, do no harm, respect the patient, treat with dignity, honesty, and transparency, preserve integrity of the profession. I think do more a responsibility to the profession in which you have been trained. You owe a responsibility to the teachers who have taught you, to the institution that has made you what you are. Now, having said broadly in general, I would like to go to deal with a few aspects in cancer because, again, when I meet some of the people for interview, they have very little information about cancer. So I thought maybe that's why I said it's going to be very basic and uh, I may be pardoned for that. I would like to describe cancer as a form of life. It is a growth aberration, a generic name for a biologic phenomenon, unique that it arises from one of our own cells, arises from a single cell. It is monoclonal. Cancer, I therefore say, 
is a traitor from within. It is one of our own selves. And that is exactly the reason why we are finding it difficult to conquer it. People today can say they are going to say it is the emperor of all maladies. We are waging a war against cancer. I think it is, it is because it is a traitor to the process. It would be, it is another form of life. So people must understand that more and more research is necessary before we will be able to do something in that. The nature of cancer is a, it is a biological phenomenon. It's not a single disease, but a wide spectrum of conditions, biologically different. Causation, carcinogenesis are different. It ranges from a highly curable to a highly aggressive condition. So, no two cancers. Many a time, we have to make them aware because even professionals, when they diagnose a cancer, are panicking to really, I mean, to reveal it to the patient. If they are going to be panicking, I think what will be the fate of the patient? So, it must be necessary for them to, not all cancers are going to be aggressive. Many cancers are curable, many cancers are preventable. The only common feature of cancer, whatever they are, will be uncontrolled proliferation and it arises from one of our own cells. And the process of a normal cell going on to a cancer cell, this transformation from normal to cancer. It is a long process. It does not happen overnight. I want to uh, impress on the, young gen the younger generation. Many a doctor will say, I diagnose cancer today. You must have it operated tomorrow, otherwise something will happen. No. No cancer, nothing happens overnight. Cancer did not occur overnight. It takes years before it comes. These are the understanding in the knowledge of cancer, that is the, how the, uh, the change of a normal cell to a cancer cell is a, to a stage of pre-cancer, made the foundation, psychological examination made it possible. These are all things that people must know. The, so if we see from cancer how we started, how the treatment started in 1954, there was hardly any treatment for cancer. Absolutely nothing. We had surgery, very crude surgery, radical surgery, mutilating surgery. Then we have very primitive radiation, high voltage radiation, and nothing more. And both of the things, nothing happened. Majority of patients either died of local disease or metastatic disease. We did not know why metastasis happened. Now, every breast cancer patient, anybody who is treating, I mean, the senior people will know automatically, I mean, how most of them develop metastasis. And we did not know at that time what happened. It is here the understanding that has made it possible, the biology and cell structure, and uh, We moved from the surgery at the time of Hippocrates existed. Surgery was one treatment that existed from the time of Hippocrates and there was, you know, it was no role in advanced cancer. And conventional high-voltage radiation, both the local treatments, none of them happened, none of them in, um, acted on when there was an extension of disease. 30% of systemic disease happens even in early cancer. Patients will say at a time it's a stage 1 cancer, but there is a metastasis. Now how does the metastasis happen? Well, that is where cell biology, cell kinetic studies came to help us. It showed us very clearly that the one centimeter lesion has a more than one million cells. And once the hundred mark is reached, metastasis can happen. So it does not so early redefinition of 
we, from, as we said, from the uh, we move from primitive um, radiation to what we call today precision radiation. Precision radiation, we have the uh, supervoted era, the radiation accelerators, precision radiotherapy, even in the radiotherapy, we have different methods of approach. You have the conformal therapy, you have the IOMRT, you have IGRT, and every one of these changes have been essentially to reduce morbidity. Reduce morbidity so that the surviving quality of life can improve. The advances in radiation oncology have been primarily due to the uh, advent of computers. I think the computers have given us a tremendous area of improving our technology in every area, the confirmation, therapy, IOMRT, rapid off, every one of them has to depend upon the computer. There are a lot of work going on improving the quality of radiation. That is, you have the um, chemical sensitizers, you have chemo sensitizers, etc. And you also have hyperthermia, which was initially did not find much area. I mean, we have also done, but today, a lot of effort is being done to improve the result with hyperthermia and hyperbaric oxygen. Both are available. The dawn of the chemotherapy era, I should say 1970, revolutionized concepts in cancer care. The cancer care where we were generally working only on either radiation or surgery. And because of the cell scientific studies and because of our understanding of micrometastasis and metastasis can happen at any point of the, uh, the growth of the cancer, we started what are called the new adjuvant and the adjuvant chemotherapy, which is able to change phenomenal changes in um, survival. People who were locally advanced and were beyond the scope of surgery could come within the scope of surgery. Not only that, we were able to bring in a quality of improvement. We change again at what we call conservation, the limb conservation, especially in osteosarcomas, where amputation was the only treatment and majority of people declined amputation because at the time rehabilitation with the I mean, artificial limbs and all had not come up at the time. I'm again talking of the 1970s, but today a lot of things have happened, so we have. But today, majority, I mean, we are not advanced, we are not metastatic and presentation. I think nearly 60 to 70 percent of the office of commerce we can be given limb conservation, that is treat them and provide them. Now you have the facility for a bone bag that you don't even need to have a titanium or other thing. You can use a pedible bone and use it. So I already said advanced disease coming into improved survival. This is a repetition of whatever has been said. Now, one of the things that I would like to mention, because in cancer today, treatment is multimodal. Now, with the law of the chemotherapy era, we know that much can be done with the addition of chemotherapy to bring many cases within the scope of either surgery or radiation. So they change the concept of becoming multi-modality treatment. Each every patient has to be given the best chance and have the possibility of either chemotherapy or radiation or surgery, whichever is biologically important. As I always said, patient centric, which is going to be more useful for a particular patient under a particular condition. 
visit widely disciplined care, not just in words, but in practice, because many medical professions have been done. After all their inspiration and their own behavior practice and all, when they are studying and their undergraduates and graduates, they are young and fresh, as they grow into practice, change their attitudes, which should not happen. Now, multidisciplinary treatment understands the limitations of surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, and it is an integrated approach based on the biologic needs. And you will have to have a team the surgeon, radiation oncologist, medical oncologist, pathologist, now pathologist with thought of understanding of molecular diagnostics, imaging specialists and molecular biologists. So I think it is necessary that we have a full team with cancer, I think, the, um, in the postgraduate, even after general surgery or general medicine, they come for super speciality. Many of these we are not uh, aware of when they come for the super speciality, MCH or DM. So this is the reason I got ready. Uh, it is a good thing that I have to see a good to be here. Change in concepts and surgery I mentioned already. Conservation. This conservation has come into all areas of, of, of cancer. It started with the breast, also some commas. Breast, breast conservation is possible. One of the very difficult things that we had in the early years, mastectomy is something that no woman wants to have the mastectomy. To persuade them and tell them, today we can tell them early breast cancer, we will be able to do a breast conservation. So similarly, laryngeal con con uh, conservation, anal conservation, many of the things will be able to do conservation provided you are able to study the biology and use the current, you know, adjuvant or adjuvant treatment. Again, I stress again, it has to be patient-centric. What is good for the patient, what is needed for the patient, and not physician-centric. Now, the major outcome of genomic studies 
his second brother and the other kids. Really, I think that we are very lucky that the young lady met her. When we say that, mind is a strong, we can do anything in society. As Madam says, that as his perfect says, we have to respect women. We have to respect women ladies. We are here to serve. When we are here to serve the people, there is no need for the happiness. Instead of asking from the society, we should serve the society. I do remember that my sister also had a breast cancer previous at the age of 52. And we know that what is the mental state of the family. And this is the important that we have to understand the patient's perspective. We are here, we are very lucky that we are a doctor and we are here to do something to the society. Madam said so many things about the cancer. And in the generation, I say that we are here to the of society from the basic the animal's knowledge, just utilize this with ethically to serve the society. Thank you, Madam. Respected Madam, we all are very, very thankful for giving us such a unique lecture and also giving some tips to the youngsters how they should behave ethically and serve the society. And last marriage, the last three, four slides were very good. That we should be inspired by great minds. And I think you are as young as you feel. So man is uh, not 91. I'm sure she can compete with anyone in their 20s. Thank you so much. I now call upon stage chairpersons for this session, Dr. Agrawal Ma'am and Dr. Bansuri Sir, who felicitate Ma'am with a token of love.
and conclude the session by E ending.
एक मिनट पीछे के बॉयज थोड़ा इस साइड आ जाइए तो पीछे के पीछे के बॉयज उसकी हाइट जाता है आप सामने आ जाओ Girls, you can sit in front. Third number, third number. पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन फर्स्ट प्राइज सॉरी उल्टा सामने शेवट सामने क्यों सर ठीक है ना फर्स्ट प्राइज गोस टू इंद्रायनी जोशी इंसानस ऑफ प्रिय क्लास है ना वर हॉस्पिटल Second prize goes to Rohit Tapriya, Forensic Aspect of Hanging. Third prize goes to Maintenance of Mental Health, Rushikesh Shinde. And last, Uttay Janath, Encouraging Prize goes to Nidhi Chaube, Pre and Post Explorer Prophylaxis of HIV. Yesterday we had Medico Social Films and team from DY Patil College Pune is the winner and the runner-up team is from JJ Medical College. With this, we conclude the session and with kind permission of all our delegates, our uh, guests of honor present here, we conclude the session. I announce that the food lunch is in courtyard and everyone can proceed and enjoy the lunch. Thank you very much.